Okay, here's some um, examples of piecewise functions. And what you can do is you can write these three down or pause your video, and then you can try to just graph these. If you want to get the graph paper that matches what I'm using, you can go over to my classroom site uh, and then go to Algebra 2, the Algebra 2 folder, and then you'll look up and you'll see different graph papers. And this is going to be a 9 12 by 12 grids. If you copy that off, you'll get the type of graph paper we're going to be using for these. It should look something like this, except it to be labeled 1 through 9. But there are 12 by 12 six in each direction grids and you could use those and that's going to be what I'm going to be using for these examples so you can try those out way to save you a little bit of time so try to graph these three so just put your video on pause do these three and come back and I'll go through the solutions so you can pause them now and try them okay hopefully you're back you tried them all and let's see what they look like so we'll go over these first three and we'll do a couple more after that or three more after that in another video. Okay, so first of all, and I kind of color coded these. So this first one was a f of x equals, and f of x is the same thing as y. And we could always kind of write y equals as two different functions, and that's what a piecewise function is. It's two or more functions with a specialized domain. They don't overlap because it wouldn't be a function. So the first one is negative 2, so it's going to be y equals negative 2, which is just a horizontal line for the values for whenever x is less than 1, and it's going to be y equals positive 2 whenever x is greater than or equal to 3. So these are just horizontal lines, so you find your boundary over the first one. It's going to be less than or equal to 1, so it looks something like this, and it's going to be negative 2, so it's just going to be this line y equals negative 2 as long as x is less than negative 1. All right, so that's what we're going to graph first. I hope you could see that, and the lines are kind of dark, so I was going to use maybe a... So if you can't really see that, I can use a darker green, I guess. So it's going to look like this. There you go, something like that. Okay. So those are all the values when x is less than 1. So this is the x value. So when x is less than 1, not equal to. So since there's not an equal sign, I have a circle there. So it's up to 1, but not equal to 1. The y value, which is the vertical position, is going to be negative 2. So that's actually the line y equals negative 2. And you could actually label it if you wanted to. Negative 2. And you're just graphing that line, but only from negative infinity up to, but not including 1 for a value of x. And then the next one is x, y is equal to 2. So it's a horizontal line that's positive 2 for x greater than or equal to 3. So there's my boundary. And it can, since it's going to be greater than or equal, I can put a dot there. And that's going to be to the right. Let me try that with the... And always use a ruler, straight edge. This is just, and there we go. And they would go on, so you, you could put a little arrow here if you wanted. And I'm using red and green, so these could differentiate. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Right, let's take a look at number two. Oh, we could always label this one anyway y equals 2. So these are just lines. Now, if you don't know how to graph lines, then you know you're you going to have some issues. Okay, the next one is y, uh, y equals 3 when x is less than negative 1. So my first part is going to be less than negative 1. Now this is a function. I should say number 1 is, all, is a function. It's just not, it's not continuous, and the, the domain has got a little gap in it. So the domain would go from negative 6 to negative 1, and then from 3 inclusive to 2. So you could figure out the domain. And the range is just going to be these two numbers, uh, negative 2 and 2. All right. So let's take a look at uh, number 2. 
So uh, y equals 3. So again, you can always just think of this as y equals f of x is the same thing as y, and this is just two different parts. So y equals 3 or y equals negative 2, depending on where you're at. So you can put those y's in if you want. So it's going to be 3. So the horizontal line will be 3 when x is less than negative 1, but not equal to. So we'll have a little open circle there. And those are the, all the lines, or all the points, excuse me, where the value of y is 3, so the vertical position is 3, it's a horizontal line, as long as x is less than negative 1, not equal to, so that's why we've got the little circle there. And you can zoom in on these if you need to. So again, that's the line y equals 3, horizontal line, y equals 3. And then x equals negative 2, I'm sorry, y equals negative 2 when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, here's negative 1, so this, these are both negative 1, so this will be kind of a function where the domain is all real numbers. And it's going to be greater than or equal to, that's why I've got a dot at 2. And they're just the numbers greater than, when x is greater than or equal to negative 1, though that is y is equal to negative 2. And you can label that line if you want. y equals negative 2. Now if we talk about the domain, we're getting all real numbers here, so it's going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity because this takes care of negative 1. But the range, the range will just be two points negative 2 and 3. Those are the only points. All right. Okay. All right. I hope that makes sense. Let's try number 3. So this is y equals negative 1. So you should be able to graph the line y equals negative 1 and then y equals x. You've got two lines to graph. So y equals negative 1 as long as x is less than or equal to 0. So we've got a dot here at negative 1 and to the left. That's what we have there. And you could, you could label that line y equals... negative 1. So it's going to be equal to negative, I'm sorry, I didn't miss the negative sign here, pardon me. Negative 1, okay. And that's for the values when x is less than or equal to 0, so that's why we've got a dot, less than or equal to 0, and it's equal to negative 1. Now this is the line y equals x. Now that's just a diagonal line. In other words, the x and the y coordinates are always the same. So I have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, x is 3, y is 3, x is 4, y is 4, etc. So it's a di nice diagonal line. And it's going to be for x greater than or equal to 0. So it's going to go right up like this. And yeah, I can put some points there so you can see then you just connect them with the line. But this is the point 0, 0. Remember, y equals x. That tells you how the x and y coordinates for the ordered pairs are related. And just they're the same. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. So that's a nice, di nice diagonal line. It goes like that. And again, you could label that line y equals x. All right. Now the domain, since this is overlapping and, and we've got a dot and a circle, the domain is all real numbers. The range will be the point negative 1 and then union the points from 0 to infinity. Open at zero to infinity. That would be the domain range. So those are the first three, so take a look at those. And then uh, we'll do three more. Now review these if you don't thoroughly understand these. And, and this is basically the fundamentals of what's happening with piecewise functions. Just the lines might get a little more complicated. We may have more than two functions, but basically these are your foundations.